you can highlight a sentiment which is Islamophobia is increasing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You can highlight that sympathy uh, mm-hmm. se- sentiment. You can highlight that people are fearful, mm-hmm. uh, that people are, are, are mm-hmm. you know, they want to leave. That's how bad it has got to. The second point on this is it's not a reflection on reality. Mm-hmm. Most Muslims will not leave. Yeah, okay, true. there is there is no Depends what they do with yeah. the benefits with with well. all of the you know doom and gloom that you'd like yeah. to throw on Britain. There's countries far worse than this. Mm. Yeah, just on that point in terms of you know the like the desire to go and as you mentioned most will not but the perception i think of look where is home that's mm. that's very very important mm. you might not leave because you know it's better than most places as you mentioned but it's not home yes. when that understanding is not there then people don't work for positive change and so there's patient- two two things to that one is you have the right wing racist islamophobes pushing that message this ain't your home this ain't your home go back go back Mm-hmm. Right, you've got Go that messaging going on, and then you've got some that are accepting it and thinking, okay, this isn't my home. Mm-hmm. So you 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 got to tackle both problems. The identity issue is more like when you say this is your home, how do you then recognize yourself? Mm-hmm. What is you your identity? So I think you know, the Arabs are they saying yeah. lisan al hal wa lisan al maqal. <coughs> they might not say in speech, but it's your attitude okay. mm. about the environment your action. you're in. Your action. Mm. Your actions speak louder than words. Okay, maybe I don't want to make this. Let's say it's, it's uh, you know migrate, make hijrah. I want to work in Saudi Arabia. I want to work in Qatar. Yeah. I want to go away. That is still there. Pakistan or Pakistan. Yeah. I think it's one thing to call this your home, and another thing to feel that Islam belongs here. And you know, if you if you if you're because a, Muslim, a lot of us a lot of us feel have this. Um, Kind of double consciousness almost that you have a bubble for your masjid and Islamic work, and you have a, have a bubble for your, you know, um, work and study and that kind of stuff. And partly, I think that is because there's a of a of a distinction between how Islam has been spoken about mm-hmm. on the mimbars for many years, on the pulpits, and how Islam actually is lived and practiced. Yeah, most definitely. And I, you know, sometimes. Discussions between imams, mm. so sometimes we like to blame, <coughs> let's say others. It's not us; yeah. it's other imams or organizations or ulama from abroad and so on. But I think we are part of that problem, mm-hmm. you know. And that perception of where is home, what is our duty? Does Islam belong here? And, and that's a very important mm. point that you mentioned. It's deeper than just okay, this is home. Mm. No, Dean belongs here. Mm. People deserve Dean. They deserve Islam. Mm. They need Islam. That perception. You know, that needs to be created in ourselves, firstly. Yeah. And I think also important in terms of the Islamophobia, as that you mentioned, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his home was Makkah. Mm. What happened to him in Makkah? Mm. There was a time his own people, well, how did they treat him? Mm. Even his sub-clan, yeah. non-Muslims from his sub-clan, were mistreated and taken out of Makkah, they re- on the outskirts of Makkah. Mm. It didn't make him say, look, mm. it's not my home, mm. it's not my people. Still, he, he knew they, mm. they need the message. Uh, uh,